Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Illustrator scripting tutorial. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can resize, rotate, and translate shapes in different objects inside of Adobe Illustrator. With the script we're gonna make today, we're going to make a simple rectangle like this, and then we're gonna take a look at how we can resize and rotate, as well as translate across the canvas in various ways. And these transformations will allow you to uh, do things in batch, and like you'll see later this month, create a color grid inside of Illustrator and they open up the possibility to move things and create more complex projects. So before we get started, I just want to remind you down below, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the GitHub link and the Instagram link and follow us on there to get both code updates as well as live updates on when videos come out. You can also join the Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, join in and ask questions you may have or contribute and help other people out. And of course, if you wanna help support the channel and get cool perks along with it, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP on YouTube and get cool things like uh, weekly streams, code shout outs and variable names based on your username or choice. You get code or videos in advance as well as other cool things. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just gonna start by creating a new JavaScript file and we're gonna start from scratch. So the first thing we need to do is create a new document with our script. So I'm gonna say var document is equal to our app dot documents dot add. And this is going to add a document, a brand new one and open it up automatically for us. Then because we're gonna be adding a color to our square or rectangle that we're creating, uh, I'm gonna set the color space. Uh, you can set the color space to either be RGB or CMYK. So I'm going to grab my document and grab the document color space. And I'm going to set this equal to the predefined value document color space dot. And then you can put CMYK here or RGB, depending on which values you prefer. Now, when we run this, it's going to create a new document. And by default, it's already going to create one layer for us. So we don't actually need to generate a new layer. But to reference this actual layer, we're going to say var layer is equal to our document.layers index zero. So the document.layers will give you a list of all of the available layers in this open document. And by default, there's just one. So we're going to grab the first one. And with this layer, we're going to create a basic rectangle with it and then fill it with the color and then look at how we can rotate, resize and translate that. Before we do that, I'm going to create a variable called fill color and we're gonna create a new RGB color. Now to create a new color, we basically just need to define what the channels are gonna be. So I'll say fill color. And since we're doing RGB, we have red, we have green, and we have blue. And we can set these values up however we want. Let's just say 255, 30, and zero. This is basically a red color and we're gonna use this to fill in our shape. And to create our shape, I'm gonna create a variable called rectangle and I'm gonna set it equal to our layer dot path items. This refers to all of the things that have paths within our layer and I'm gonna say rectangle. Now our rectangle will take four arguments, the top, left, width, and height. The top and the left are basically the length or the distance they are from the top and left of our document. The width and height is obviously the size. And this also needs to be uh, path items in camel case. So let's for starters just do zero, zero for the top and left. And then for the size, let's make it 300 by 300 pixels. So now if I run this, I'm going to fix my error and run it. You can see we now have a rectangle path created within um, this document here. And it's all the way at the bottom, but it's 300 by 300 pixels. So that means that uh, because we're not changing the left or top, it's just going to start in the initial position. I'm gonna fix the position in a second, but first I'm going to change the color of my rectangle by saying rectangle.fillColor is equal to my variable of the RGB color I created. And also to make sure that uh, it actually applies the fill because yes, while you can set the fill color of something, you can also disable the fill. So what we're gonna do is say rectangle.filled is equal to true. And if you wanted this to be for the stroke color, you would just say uh, stroke color 
and stroked is equal to true. So now if we create this, we can get the same uh, rectangle or square, but now it's gonna be the red color we chose. The next step is to basically uh, look at how we can move this around uh, when we initialize it here, as well as with the functions this tutorial is about. So I'm going to attempt to center this. This is the top. So let's grab our document.height and half it. That way it's about halfway um, from the top. And then for the left, we'll grab our document.width and we'll half that. Now let's see how this uh, creates it. So looking at it from a distance, it looks like the origin point here is approximately at the center, which is great. But that means we need to adjust slightly more so that it is centered in the center of the uh, square like this. So what we're going to do is take probably uh, 150 and subtract or add it to each of those. And which is basically just half the uh, width and height of the square. So if we try that, you can see the width is in the correct direction, but the height needs to be the other direction. So now we have a perfectly centered rectangle. Um, we have this top left width and height set up for it. Now what we can do is go in and look at how to resize, rotate, and translate it. First, how to resize an object. These uh, functions and methods are available for almost any type of object inside of your layer, whether it's text, uh, shape, or any number of items. In order to resize something, take the variable name or the reference to it and say dot resize. Now, if you go into the actual Illustrator scripting guide and type in dot resize, you'll see that it has uh, this ability for, like I said, many different items, text frame, placed items, graph items, group items, all of them are the same. And it actually, by default, requires two arguments. You want the scale X and the scale Y, and then it also has all these other options, which are bools. So you can have uh, the change positions, bool, change fill patterns, change fill gradients, and uh, just other options you can mess around with. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we just need the scale X and scale Y, and it tells us that this is based on 100. So 100% is the default scale. Let's go ahead and resize it to maybe 300%, and this should make it quite big in our canvas. As you can see, that scaled it up quite a bit and up 300%. And of course, these don't have to be uniform changes. You could say maybe change one uh, to be different than the other, and this will give you a different shaped resize. Now let's say we have this nice uh, wide, wide rectangle we've created, and now we wanna rotate it to fit it better. Now what we can do is grab our rectangle or whatever our object is again, and say dot rotate, and now we just need to give it the degrees of rotation. Uh, so if we want, we can turn it 45 or 90 degrees. In this case, let's try 90 degrees and see if it rotates it nice for us. And it does indeed. If you, we wanted to, we could go back in and maybe adjust the uh, scale a bit. We could make the width larger and the height as well a little bit. And let's see if that fit, fills it. And that produces a pretty nice result. So that's how we can resize something and then rotate it. I'm gonna go ahead and undo a couple of these um, just to make it a little bit smaller and this is how it should look now. Now what I wanna do is teach you how you can translate something, which is very handy, and translation is simply the act of moving the position. Now in the scripting guide, if you've done a little bit of digging, you'll see that there's a transform and a translate option. The difference being of why we're gonna use translate is because it's based on the current position you're in. Usually you want to make uh, changes based on the initial position your object is in, which is what the translate will do. You give it the change in Y and change in X of, where you, of which direction you want it to go, and it will move it there. The transform is actually just going to change the transform matrix of the item itself. What that means is it's going to physically move it to whatever coordinates you give it. And I prefer to use translate because, again, just being able to move it based on its initial position is more handy to me, especially when running through loops and having to add items incrementally after one another. So I'm going to go ahead and move my rotate here to be 45 instead of 90. And now we can go ahead and say rectangle dot translate and now we just need to give it the change in x and the change in y so let's go ahead and just first say 100 by 100 and i spelt translate incorrectly 
Now if we go ahead and run it again, you can see it's going to move it up and to the right. So the coordinate system in Illustrator is a little bit different than other programs. If we're adding to the x-axis, we're going to go to the right side like normal. But if we're adding to the y-axis, we're going to go up rather than down, which if you're more familiar with After Effects or even just screen coordinates is a more familiar thing. So the y is sort of inverted. If I wanted to move this down, say 200 pixels, I would say negative 200 instead of positive 200. And as you can see, it's going to change accordingly. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to resize, rotate, and translate your objects inside of Adobe Illustrator with a script. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new Illustrator videos and other cool videos coming out. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub and Instagram to get notified of when code comes out, as well as when videos go live. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, be sure to come and join us. Get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more in this community. And lastly, if you want to help support the channel and get cool perks with it, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and get involved. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.